Welcome back to Cyber Insider. If you're watching this, you probably know the internet isn't exactly a private place. Between advertisers tracking your every click, ISPs logging your history, and government agencies keeping a watchful eye, going invisible sounds pretty appealing. That's usually where the conversation splits into two very different directions. The Onion Router, better known as Tor, and Virtual Private Networks, or VPNs. A lot of people think these two tools do the exact same thing. They both hide your IP address, they both talk a big game about encryption, and they're both tools for privacy. But the reality is, they're completely different beasts. One was built by the US Navy and lets you access the dark web for free. The other is a paid industry designed to make your Netflix streaming faster and secure your entire digital life. Today, we're going to do a comprehensive head-to-head -head comparison of Tor and VPNs. We're going to look at raw speed tests, we'll dig into the actual encryption technology, we'll talk about which one can actually unblock streaming services, and we're going to have a very serious conversation about trust, because some of the things we've found about who funds these tools might actually shock you. By the end of this video, you'll know exactly which one belongs in your digital toolkit. Let's start with the most noticeable difference between these two. Speed. If you're used to browsing the modern internet, watching high-definition videos, downloading large files, or just having pages load instantly, you need to understand how these two tools handle your data. We've been testing VPNs and Tor for over six years, and the difference is massive. When we tested a high-quality VPN, specifically NordVPN, using the modern WireGuard protocol, we were hitting speeds of around 750 megabits per second. That is lightning fast. In fact, with the introduction of WireGuard protocol in recent years, VPNs have become so efficient that you likely won't even notice they're running. You get upgraded encryption and better reliability without sacrificing your connection quality. Now, let's compare that to Tor. Tor is built differently. It routes your traffic through three different relays. A card relay, a middle relay, and an exit relay. While this is great for scrambling your location, it's terrible for performance. In our testing, Tor speeds average around 5 megabits per second. On a lucky day, with good relays, we might hit 9 or 10 megabits. If you look at the math, the VPN in our test was almost 50 times faster than the Tor network. But it's not just about raw download speed, it's about latency. Tor suffers from very high latency because your data is physically bouncing around the world before it reaches its destination. This results in a sluggish experience where websites take a long time to start loading. If you're trying to stream HD video, Tor is going to be a buffering nightmare, whereas a VPN wins this category easily. Speed is nice, but we're here for security. How do these tools actually protect your data? This is where the technical architecture becomes really important. Tor uses a layered system of encryption. This is actually where the name Onion Router comes from. Your traffic passes through those three relays I mentioned. The first one, the guard relay, knows your IP address, but not what you're looking at. The mental relay knows nothing, while the exit relay knows what site you're visiting, but not who you are. The problem with Tor is that this encryption only exists inside the browser. This is a huge distinction that many people miss. When you use the Tor browser, only the things you do inside that specific window are encrypted. If you have a torrent client running in the background, or your computer decides to run a system update, or you open a separate tab, none of this is routed through Tor. It's all exposed to the regular internet, revealing your IP address and location. A good VPN works differently. It creates an encrypted tunnel for your entire operating system. Whether you're using a web browser, a torrent client, a gaming app, or just your background system services, everything is encrypted. Most VPNs use the OpenVPN protocol with AES-256 bit encryption, which is universally considered the gold standard. We are also seeing more adoption of WireGuard, which uses the ChaCha's 20 cipher. Furthermore, while Tor relies on random volunteers to run those relays, VPNs run their own servers. Some advanced VPNs like NordVPN and Surfshark even offer double VPN features that route your traffic through two servers, mimicking that multi-hop benefit of Tor, but with much better speeds. There are even Tor over VPN servers available in ProtonVPN and NordVPN that let you enter the Tor network while keeping the protection of the VPN. Because a VPN secures your whole device and not just one app, it takes the win for security architecture. Now, let's talk about the controversial stuff. Anonymity. Can these tools actually stop the government or a determined adversary from finding out who you are? Tor has a reputation for being the ultimate tool for anonymity. 
but history paints a different picture. There have been multiple court cases proving that the FBI and other agencies can de-anonymize Tor users. For example, in 2017 case, the FBI managed to breach Tor's anonymity to identify a user. The government considered the technique they used so valuable that they would rather compromise the court case than reveal the source code of the exploit to the public. Tor has been proven vulnerable to various exploits over the years. Because the exit nodes, the final step in the Tor connection, are unencrypted, a malicious person running that node could potentially see and modify your traffic. On the VPN side, the threat is different. We have not seen evidence of governments breaking the encryption of a correctly configured VPN using OpenVPN or WireGuard. When the authorities want to catch a VPN user, they don't break the code. They pressure the company. There have been cases where the FBI pressured providers like IPVanish and PureVPN to log data on specific users to help with criminal cases. This highlights the single most important factor with VPNs. Trust. Because the encryption holds up, your safety depends on choosing a VPN that is actually no locks and operates in a safe jurisdiction. However, the track record shows that while Tor can be technically exploited by sophisticated agencies, VPN encryption generally remains solid, provided a company doesn't sell you out. Let's move away from spies and the FBI for a moment, and talk about what you actually do online, watching movies and downloading files. If you want to watch Netflix, Hulu or any other streaming service, Tor is not the tool for you. Between the high latency and the slow speeds, streaming is almost impossible, especially in HD. Furthermore, most streaming services block Tor exit nodes entirely. Torrenting is another major point. The Tor project specifically tells you not to use Tor for torrenting. It slows down the entire network for everyone else. And because torrent clients often leak IP addresses, it's not secure. VPNs, on the other hand, are the kings of this category. A good VPN is virtually undetectable in terms of speed, meaning you can stream 4K video without buffering. We regularly test services like NordVPN with Netflix, and they work seamlessly. For torrenting, a VPN is essential to hide your activity from your ISP and avoid copyright strikes, and it handles large bandwidth requirements very easily. This is perhaps the most interesting part of our investigation. Who actually owns and pays for these tools? Tor is often viewed as a punk rock anti-establishment tool, but did you know it was created by the US government? It was built by contractors for the Naval Research Lab and DARPA. Even today, the Tor project is a non-profit that receives millions of dollars in funding from the US government, including the State Department and the National Science Foundation. Why would the government fund a tool that hides people? The Tor project itself has admitted that the government needs a network like Tor to exist so that their own agents can use it. If only spies use Tor, it would be obvious who they were. They need regular people, like you, to create noise on the network to hide the spies. Plus, since anyone can operate a Tor node, including hackers or intelligence agencies, you never really know who's handling your traffic. One academic study found over 100 malicious relays operating on the network. VPNs are private businesses. They're funded by you, the subscriber. This creates a direct financial incentive. If they fail to protect your privacy, they go out of business. While there are shady free VPNs that sell your data, and you should definitely avoid those, premium VPNs have a business model that relies on trust. Many top-tier VPNs now undergo third-party security audits to prove they don't keep locks. When you use Tor, you're trusting an ecosystem funded by the government and run by unvetted volunteers. When you use a VPN, you're trusting a company that you pay to protect you. For most people, the paid business model offers more accountability. Finally, let's talk about your wallet and your devices. The biggest advantage of Tor is that it's 100% free. You download the browser, you connect, and you're done. However, it's not very versatile. It's difficult to set up on mobile devices, and it's not built into your operating system. It's a browser-based tool, and that is its limit. VPNs usually cost money. You're looking anywhere from $2 to $10 per month, depending on the plan. However, that cost buys you incredible versatility. You can install a VPN on your router to protect every device in your house, including your smart TV and gaming console. You can use slick apps on your iPhone or Android device that handle the connection automatically. Many VPNs also come with bonus features like ad blocking, Cyber CyberGhost and NordVPN, which you don't get natively with Tor. And speaking of cost, if you are looking to get a VPN, never pay full price. We partnered with top rated providers like NordVPN and Surfshark to bring you exclusive discounts you won't find anywhere else. Check the links in the description below to lock in these special deals. They often bring the monthly cost down to just the price of a cup of coffee. 
So who wins the showdown? For 99% of the people watching this video, a VPN is the better choice. It offers a high level of privacy and security without slowing down your internet. It protects your entire device, not just your browser. It allows you to stream, torrent and game without restrictions. It's versatile, easy to use and the encryption standards are incredibly robust. Tor has its place. If you're a whistleblower, a journalist who restricts your resume or someone who needs to access the dark web for a specific reason and you have zero budget, Tor is a powerful tool. But remember the risks. Only your browser traffic is hidden and the network is slower and monitored by various agencies. Ultimately, you don't even have to choose. You can use both. You can connect to your VPN first to hide your activity from your ISP and then open the Tor browser for that extra layer of onion routing. But for your daily driver, go with a trustworthy VPN. Thanks for watching Cyber Insider. If you found this breakdown helpful, hit that like button and subscribe for more deep dives into digital privacy. And don't forget to check the description for those discounts we mentioned. Stay safe and stay bright.